You can vent to me anytime, but I would hate for us to lose another talented Latina engineer. The residents of the Coterie are put to different tests, but which ones will pass the game? Let's break down episode four of Good Trouble and find out just what happened. <laughs> Rise and shine on your loving people, Lisa here, ready to chat all about this week's episode of Good Trouble. So in this episode, we find some of our characters caught in various so-called games, whether it's an actual game or the never-ending game of life. And while some characters choose to stand up for themselves, others uh, opt for the long game. So let's just go ahead and dive into this episode. First up, let's talk about Davia. Davia is questioning whether she made the right life decision in moving to Los Angeles and being a teacher with Teach for America. Because honestly, if you live in LA and you're trying to make it in some way or another, it's not really the easiest place to do it. Anyway, while she's out one night with Brian and Mariana, Brian informs Mariana that Davia always gets kind of the way that she's acting and how she's reflecting about maybe going home and all of that. When Davia's friend benefits from home, Jeff comes to visit. So Jeff is in town and joins them for drinks, but when he gets a notification on his phone about the alarm at his house back in Wisconsin going off, he goes and takes care of it. Meanwhile, Mariana heads to the bathroom and she ends up overhearing Jeff on the phone telling the security company to call his wife. So now Mariana is sitting on this information and asks Kelly if she should say something or not. No. It's always the messenger who gets shot. We then see, you know, how great Davia and Jeff actually are together, how great of a connection they have, and they're hooking up as Davia talks to him about thinking of moving home and all of this, and he actually seems to be okay with it, that they could spend more time together when she's back home, which would definitely prove to be interesting, right? Then later in the kitchen, Mariana goes ahead and tells Davia what she overheard Jeff saying about having a wife, and Davia says what I don't know if many of us were expecting her to say, or maybe you were, she already knew he was married because you know what? She sang at his freaking wedding. So now Mariana doesn't understand how Davia could date a married man while Davia says, you know, he's not happy in his marriage and she does what she wants and Mariana should do what she wants. And she also says, you know, how can Mariana go and say she's happy working at Speculate when she's not? And well, unfortunately Davia, those don't quite match up to be the same thing but I get what she was trying to say, but I don't know. Then when we see Davia say goodbye to Jeff, he tells her that she should stay in LA and while she's struggling, she should stick it out and extend her teaching contract because he envies her for actually being happy and getting out of their hometown. And well, she's bawling her eyes out, but she says he's right and ends her scene in tears. Now as for Alice, she sort of learns how to stand up for herself, like maybe the tiniest bit with the help of Malika, but I mean, hey, it's a baby step and it's some progress, right? So she's helping Sumi plan her wedding. Unfortunately, it's painful for us to watch. I couldn't imagine being Alice and actually having to do that, but you can tell she definitely doesn't want to be there, but she's still agreeing to do everything Sumi asks. And Malika is sitting there watching this and she just says to Alice, you know, like, why are you doing this, especially to yourself? So to add to the stress of planning a wedding for the person she's in love with, things just keep going wrong for Alice at the Coterie. They keep running out of toilet paper, the internet's not working right, all of this, and Alice is just becoming more overwhelmed and she doesn't quite know how to handle it. Malika tells Alice that she needs to set some boundaries with the tenants and maybe someone else and stop letting people take advantage of her. But Alice is the type of person who doesn't want to let anyone down, she doesn't want to seem like a mean person, and thinks everyone's counting on her, so it's not so easy for her to put her foot down. But as Malika points out, sometimes you have to break commitments to take care of yourself, which seems very true in Alice's case because you can see the mental toll everything is taking on her. So Alice finally calls a house meeting and tells everyone that they have to, well, get their own toilet paper. So it's a start, right? And Alice is expecting some kind of pushback, but it seems like everyone's actually like, that's it? Okay, cool, we can do that. So while Alice was able to take a baby step in putting her foot down about the toilet paper, it doesn't happen so much when it comes to Sumi. So when Alice goes to the bathroom, she actually finds that the stall she's in is out of toilet paper, which makes her start to unravel. And then to add salt to the wound, Sumi comes in wanting to talk about bridesmaids dresses. And just like how we saw Davia sobbing at the end of her scene, we see that with Alice in this storyline for this episode. Now, as far as Mariana and her work conditions, they are not getting any better. And with every episode, we see just how much the brohos get douchier and even more racist this time around. 
But when Mariana brings up going to HR about Alex, Alex says he can also go to HR with stuff on Mariana to make her look bad. So Mariana's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. And you know who isn't really helping the situation? Raj. Like, sure, you can tell he actually is a nice guy, but him going along, laughing with Alex and Sam and going along with their jokes and them doing the little Indian accent to mock his family, he's unfortunately still enabling these problems. And he says he just doesn't want the guys to think he's super sensitive and all of that. And he's just kind of like, yeah. Well, the next day, HR asks Mariana to be in the photo and participate in interviews for the new career page highlighting the engineers. And Mariana quickly notices that the only people participating in this campaign are the handful of women and people of color at the company. And she's realizing how she herself was duped when she got her job by all the talk about diversity and pictures that only showed the diverse workers in the company. So now Mariana's kind of determined to stick it to the man. Casey, however, advises her against speaking her mind in the interviews because Casey says while it's frustrating, if Mariana goes through with it, she could be blowing up her career for a culture that most likely won't change at that company. Mariana also talks to Raj about the situation and decides, you know what, she's going to do it. She's going to say what it's really like to work at Speculate. But when she sits down in that interview chair with all the lights and the people staring at her, including Alex and Sam who have walked in, yeah, Mariana just grips her chair and lies through her teeth about how great it is to work there. She then has another heart-to-heart -heart with Raj about why he goes along with everything. They both talk about how they tried to, you know, fit in in high school by dyeing their hair and how much they actually have in common. And then Mariana asks Raj if he wants to get a drink that night. Now when Raj shows up at the club, he finds that Brian and Davia are also there with Mariana. And when Davia and Mariana start checking out guys, it becomes obvious to Raj that he just got friend zone. Lastly, let's talk about Callie, Rebecca, and Ben, the clerks. So they are trying to come up with some legal figure or case for some game Judge Wilson always plays with his clerks that's basically like 20 questions or a guessing game. Now, as they're moving paperwork and talking, Ben asks Callie if she knew the woman who sat down next to Jamal's mom in the courtroom, which we all know was Malika, and Callie definitely knows her. Callie, though, says she saw the woman, aka Malika, on the steps of the courthouse protesting, so she recognized her from that. Now, the next day at Judge Wilson's house at the barbecue, we see that Rebecca and Ben are still pretty much proving themselves to be slime balls as they show up with flowers and wine. When the previous day, Callie asked if she should bring something, and they were like, no, you don't have to, we're not. Yeah, these two are gonna have to do a lot on this show to prove to me that they should be in my good graces as well a viewer. Anyway, the dinner is obviously full of differing opinions, which makes tension rise, and it's why people tell you you should never bring politics up at family dinners. And then things get worse when it's time for this game. So during a break in the game where the clerks are trying to guess whatever person or case the judge has picked, the judge's wife tells Callie the answer because she likes Callie and wants to get the game finished fast. So when the game is pretty much over and the clerks are making their final guesses, Callie actually chooses to not use the answer the wife gave her, but instead gives a different answer. But it turns out to be wrong. And Rebecca and Ben also make their guesses. And the judge says, well, they all got it wrong. But it seems like Ben doesn't fully believe he got it wrong. And is welcome like, to turn over the card if you don't believe me. Of course, I believe you, Your Honor. Now when it's time for Judge Wilson to guess, they end up duping him and, well, he doesn't guess Hulk Hogan, right? And you can tell Ben's gloating from thinking they were so clever and how excited he is that they're the first clerks to stump the judge, but Judge Wilson seems pretty pissed by this whole thing and awkwardly cuts the barbecue to an end. And then the clerks go to have a drink together to try to, you know, figure out who on earth Judge Wilson is. And when they start talking about his kids, Callie admits that she actually saw the judge's son when she went back in to get her phone. So Judge Wilson has plenty of secrets of his own. Now when Rebecca and Ben ask Callie if she got any insight as to why Judge Wilson would be lying about his son, we see that Tate has an ankle monitor, so it seems like he has gotten himself into some trouble. The judge is trying to, uh, you know, keep on the download, but Kelly ends up keeping the information to herself, which is probably smart, as well as the information about why Judge Wilson lied to Ben about figuring out the case, because it does seem like Ben got it right. Judge Wilson told Kelly as she was leaving that he knows Callie could have cheated, even though it seems like we found out the case that she was told was wrong. But since Callie didn't, it proved her character and he was impressed and he thought Callie earned the right to keep her case. Then we see Ben walking Callie home, pondering why Judge Wilson would have not wanted him to win and Ben trying to think of ways that he can make Judge Wilson like him. 
Then Ben tries to invite himself up for a drink, but Callie says no and that she has to go. So when Ben leaves, he passes Malika on the street and she sees her go into the coterie. And when Callie is in the lobby and she smiles over at Malika, she realizes something. You okay? Yeah, seems like now Ben maybe has even more ammo on Callie, and it seems like he would not be the type of person who would hesitate holding that over her head for some reason, or blackmailing her. All right, though, that seems to pretty much end the main events of this episode, and at times it was frustrating, but it was frustrating because what the characters did in some instances is sadly what happens. It's probably the frustration we felt in real life seeing certain situations happen right around us, the people we know. So for Mariana, the whole workplace issue she's dealing with are sadly, that's all too common and it takes a lot of courage, honestly, to speak out because you're putting your career, your image on the line. I mean, going back to that, look at how long it took for things like the Me Too movement and people speaking out on sexual harassment and all of that in the workplace to finally become a reality. So I'm just hoping they, they do justice with this storyline. I know not everybody gets a happy ending, but I'm at least hoping that Mariana is able to at some point stand up for herself and that Raj doesn't take what happened at the club like personally and then try to turn against Mariana. You know how s some people can take, oh, I thought you, you were leading me on and then now that you're not, I'm going to destroy you type of mentality. It doesn't seem like Raj would be that kind of a person, but it did seem like he was pretty upset to learn that, you know, this wasn't a date or whatever and they weren't alone. But I'm counting on Raj that he's still a good guy, so yeah, I'm hoping he doesn't make Mariana's work life even worse, and maybe they'll team up. Maybe they can get Casey to go along with them, and they can uh, take down this place. It seems like Evan has taken a liking, Evan from Speculate, the creator guy, has kind of taken a notice or a liking maybe to Mariana, so maybe it could be on their side. Another part of Mariana's like little bit in this uh, episode that I really related to was how that she gets dressed for work the night before and just sleeps in the clothes. I actually did that when I was in middle school. I would sleep in the t-shirt and stuff that I was gonna wear the next day. I didn't really sleep in the jeans. I kept the sweatpants on for that because jeans are um, uncomfortable to sleep in. But I just loved that whole situation. I was like, oh dude, I used to do that. So I think that's what I like about parts of this show is how you can relate to different things from different characters, whether it's on a deeper level or something so ridiculous as that. I feel like everybody's sort of represented in this show. Now, as far as Callie's storyline, man, this girl just keeps walking on thin ice. Everything she does, one step forward, five steps back, something comes to bite her in the butt. I mean, that's always happened to her on the Fosters, right? So why would I expect anything less in good trouble? But it seems like she is the only clerk Judge Wilson has taken a liking to, or at least seems to kind of respect, because she's not kissing his ass. She's actually just being herself. But I have a feeling that Ben and Rebecca, they're not gonna stop coming for her. I'm also very interested to learn more about his son, Tate, who's played by Zachary Gordon, because um, could maybe having this knowledge about the judge's son play to Callie's advantage or not? Why is the judge trying to hide this? Like what did Tate do to even get that ankle bracelet? As far as Alice goes, I related to parts of her storyline too, especially how she's afraid of, you know, letting people down and being a people pleaser because I'm actually kind of like that a lot in certain aspects of life. And you know, it's not an easy habit to break, but I am hoping at some point she tells Sumi to shove that wedding dress up her you know what, because it's just heartbreaking to see how awful Sumi is. And I guess the saying love is blind is real in some cases, unfortunately. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for my roundup of this week's episode. So I'm gonna stop my rambling and let's go ahead and look at the promo clip for the next episode. Think I also sing Brian? I don't know. How could he? You're up there every night. Not every night. Something wrong? We got an anonymous tip that this place is a fire trap. Fire trap, what? All right, y'all, you know what time it is. It's time for you to sound off down in the comments below with your thoughts on this week's episode. What advice would you give Kelly, Mariana, Alice, and Dobby in the situations they faced in this episode? Which character do you want to learn more about? Let me know, then you can click right over here for my exclusive interview with the cast of YouTube's brand new show, Wayne. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a recap, an interview, or any of my rambling. I'm Lisa, as always. Thanks for hanging out with me right here on Channel Media, and I'll see you next time.